Let's have a look at some more um, examples where we need to factorise quadratics. I suggest you get a pen and paper so that you can try these along with me just to make sure you've really got it. OK, the first one we want to factorise, y squared plus 6y plus 9. Give it a go. So, let's see. Hopefully this is what you did. You know that you want to have things that multiply together to give you 9 that add up together to give you 6. So, what are the two things that multiply together to give you 9 that add up to give you 6? If you couldn't see that immediately, you would start by writing out the factors. We know because they've got to multiply together to give you a positive, that it's either a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. But because they've got to add up to plus 6, we know it must be a positive times a positive. So let's look at the factors of 9. It's 1 and 9, and then there's also 3 with 3. Which of those add up to give you 6? Well, obviously, it's the 3 and 3. So you get plus 3 plus 3. And we can write that nicely as y plus 3 squared. OK, how will it be different if we changed it to y squared minus 6y plus 9? Well, again, it's still stuff that needs to multiply together to give you 9. But this time they've got to add up together to give you negative 6. You know it's either got to be a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. And in this case, because you're going to end up with negative 6, you know it's got to be a negative times a negative. And you know that it's going to be 3 and 3. And so this one is y minus 3 squared. So the change from the plus 6 to the minus 6y is just that it's here y minus 3 instead of y plus 3. Okay, now what about this? It looks like a monster. Except, if you notice, that it's actually just the same thing. Except where you had a y, you now have an ab. And so, it is very simply and easily ab minus 3 squared. Let's have a look at factorising this. Try and do the first line yourself. Hopefully you recognised that the first thing you need to do is take out a common factor because we always look for that first. And here your common factor is 3. And that will leave you with that. Now try and do the next line of factorisation. So, hopefully you saw this. You've got to multiply together to give you negative 8. So it's a positive and a negative that multiply together to give you negative, or a negative and a positive. And then they've got to add up to give you negative 2. So let's look at the things that multiply together to give me negative 8. It's 1 multiplied by negative 8, or negative 1 multiplied by 8. 2 multiplied by negative 4, and then of course negative 2 multiplied by 4 would be another option. 3 doesn't go in. 4, well we've already dealt with 4, so we've got them all. These are all the integer possibilities of multiplying together to give you negative 8. So we're going to look through these and see which of them add up to negative 2, and I can notice pretty immediately it's this. 2 subtract 4 gives me negative 2, so I have a plus 2 and a subtract 4. Now what about this one? If you ask to factorise minus x squared plus x plus 6. Now I hate dealing with those negatives and with a negative x squared I know it's going to get me all confused. So you know what I do in cases like this? I take out a common factor of negative 1, which I just write as negative, right? Negative. And what's left here is this will be an x squared. Now this will be negative x and that'll be negative 6. Just check it. See, if you multiply this back in, you're going to get negative x squared plus x plus 6. You see, and now I've got it in this form. 
it's really easy to factorize. It's the same old normal type of factorization I've been doing up until now. So try that for yourself. See if you can factorize. Okay, so did you notice that you needed to have things that multiply together to give you negative 6? That added up to give you a negative 1. So multiplying together to give you negative 6 means you've got to have a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive. So let's look at all those things that multiply together to give you negative 6. It would be 1 multiplied by negative 6 or negative 1 multiplied by 6. And 2 multiplied by negative 3 or otherwise negative 2 multiplied by 3. And now we've got all those integer values. Which of those add up together to give me negative 1? Well, it's this lot here. 2 subtract 3 gives me negative 1. And so we have plus 2 subtract 3.